Good morning, Excellency. Judge Athol, Mr. Chief. Mr. Paris asked to see us. Where is he? I'll fetch him. Marshal Herrick, when did Reverend Hale arrive? It was toward midnight, I think. What is he about here? He goes among them that will hang, sir, and he prays with them. He sits with Goody Nurse now, and Mr. Paris with him. Indeed. That man have no authority to enter here, Marshal. Why have you let him in? Why, Mr. Paris, command me, sir. I cannot deny him. Are you drunk, Marshal? No, sir. It is a bitter night, and I have no fire here. Fetch Mr. Paris. Aye, sir. There is a prodigious stench in the cell. I have only now cleared the prisoners out for you. What prisoners? Tituba and Zara Good. Mm. Beware hard drink, Marshal. Aye, sir. Let you question Hale, Excellency. I should not be surprised he have been preaching in Andover lately. We'll come to that, Hathorn. Speak nothing of Andover. <sighs> Paris prays with him. That's strange. Excellency, I wonder if it'd be wise to let Mr. Parry so continuously with the prisoners. I think sometimes the man has a mad look these days. Mad? I met him yesterday morning coming out of his house and I bid him good morning. And he wept and went his way. I think it is not well that the village sees him so unsteady. Perhaps he has some sorrow. I think it be the cows, sir. Cows, Mr. Cheva? There be so many cows wandering the high roads now that the masters are in the jails. And much disagreement as to who they will belong to now. I know Mr. Paris be arguing with farmers all yesterday. There is great contention, sir, about the cows, and contention make him weep, sir. It were always a man that weep for contention. Oh, good morning, sir. Thank you for coming. I beg your pardon waking you so early. Good morning, Judge. Reverend Hale have no right to enter this prison. Do you leave him alone with What's the prisoners? What's his business here? Excellency, hear me. It's a providence. Reverend Hale has returned to bring Rebecca Nurse to God. He bids her confess. Hear me. Rebecca have not given me a word this three months since she came. Now she sits with him and her sister and Martha Corey and two or three others, and he pleads with them, confess their crimes Why, and save their lives. This is indeed a providence, Why? and they soften, they soften. No, not yet, not yet. But I thought to summon you, sir, that we might not think on whether it be not wise to... Um... I thought to put a question, sir, and I hope you will Mr. not... Mr. Paris, be plain. What troubled you? There is news, sir, that the court, the court must reckon with... My niece, sir, my niece, I... I believe she's vanished. Vanished? Oh, I'd thought to advise you what earlier... Why, how long has she been gone? This be the third night. She and Mercy Lewis are both gone. I will send a party for them. Where may they be? Excellency, I think they be aboard a ship. A ship? Mm -hmm. My daughter tells me how she heard them speaking of ships last week, and tonight I discover my... my strong box is broken into. She have robbed you. Thirty-one pound is gone. I'm penniless. <laughs> Mr. Paris, you are a brainless man. Excellency, it profit nothing you should blame me. I cannot think they would run up, except they fear to keep in Salem any more. Ah. Mark it, sir. Abigail had close knowledge of the town, and since the news of Andover has broken here... is remedied. The court returns there on Friday and will resume examination. I'm sure of it, sir, but the rumor here speaks rebellion there in Andover. There is no rebellion in Andover. I tell you what is spoken here, sir. Andover have thrown out the court, they say, and will have no part of witchcraft. There be a faction here feeding on that news. And I tell you true, sir, I fear there will be a riot here. Riot? Why, at every execution I have seen naught but high satisfaction Judge in the town. Hathorn, it were another sort that hang till now. Rebecca Nurse is no Bridget that lived three years with Bishop before she married him. John Proctor is not Isaac Ward that drank his family to ruin. I would to God it were not so, Excellency, that be these people have great weight yet in the town. Let Rebecca stand upon the gibbet and send up some righteous prayer, and I fear she'll wake a vengeance on Excellency, you. Excellency, she's a condemned witch. Pray the you, court of... How do you propose that, Mr. Paris? Excellency, I would postpone these hangings there for a while. There will be no postponement. Now Mr. Hale has returned, there is... Hope, I think, for if he bring even one of these to God, that confession surely damns the others in the public eye, and none may doubt any more that they're all linked to hell. This way, unconfessed and claiming innocence, doubts are multiplied, and honest people will weep for them, and our good purpose is lost in their tears. 
Oh, it cannot be forgot, sir, that when I, when I summoned the congregation for John Proctor's excommunication, there were hardly thirty people come to hear it. Now, that, that speaker discontent, there will be I no think, and Now, sir, which of the condemned, in your opinion, may be brought to God? I will myself strive with him till dawn. There is not sufficient time to dawn. I shall dawn. do my utmost. Which of them do you have hope for? Excellency, a dagger. What do you say? Tonight, when I open my door to leave my house, a dagger clattered to the ground. Oh. You cannot hang this sword. There is danger for me. I dare not step out at night. Uh, Reverend Hale, sir. I accept my congratulations, Reverend Hale. We are gladdened to see you, you must return to them. your they good will not work. Budge. You misunderstand me, sir. I cannot pardon these when twelve are already hanged for the same crime. It is not just. Rebecca, will the sun not will confess. rise in a few minutes. Now hear me and beguile yourself no more. I will not receive a single plea for pardon or postponement. Yes, Them that will not confess will hang. Judge Twelve them. are already executed. The names of these seven are given out, and the village expects to see them die this morning. Yes, postponement now speaks a floundering on my part. Reprieve or pardon must cast doubt upon the guilt of them that died till now. While I speak God's law, I will not crack its voice with whimpering. If retaliation is your fear, know this. I should hang 10,000 that dared to rise against the law, and an ocean of salt tears could not melt the resolution of the statutes. Now, draw yourselves up like men and help me as you are bound by heaven to do. Have you spoken with them all, Mr. Hale? All. All but Proctor. He is in the dungeon. What's Proctor's way now, Marshal? He sits like some great bird. You do not know he lived, except he will take food from time to time. His wife. His wife must be well on with child now. She is, sir. Well, thank you, Mr. Pallas. Huh? You have a closer knowledge of this man. Might her presence soften him? It is possible, sir. He have not laid eyes on her these three months. I should summon her. Is he yet adamant? Has he struck at you again, Marshal? He cannot, sir. He is chained to the wall. <laughs> Fetch Goody Proctor to me. Then let you bring him up. Excellency. Aye, Excellency, if you postpone a week and publish to the town that you are striving for their confessions, that speak mercy on your part, Mr. not for Hale, as God have not empowered me like Joshua to stop this sun from rising, so I cannot withhold from them the perfection of their punishment. If you think God wills you to raise rebellion, Mr. Danforth, you are mistaken. You have heard rebellion spoken in the town. Excellency, there are orphans wandering from house to house. Abandoned cattle bellow on the high roads. The stink of rotting crops hangs everywhere. And no man knows when the harlot's cry will end his life. And you wonder yet if rebellion spoke. Better yet, you should marvel how they do not burn your province. Mr. Hale, have you preached in Andover this month? Thank God they have no need of me in Andover. You baffle me, sir. Why have you returned here? <laughs> Why, it is all so simple. I come to do the devil's work. I come to counsel Christians. They should belie themselves. There is blood on my head. Can you not see the blood on my head? Mr. Hale. Shh, shh, hush. <clears throat> Remove her chains, Marshal. Aye, sir. Goody Proctor, I hope you are hearty. I, I am yet six months before my time. Pray you be at your ease. We come not for your life. We. <sighs> Mr. Hare, will you speak with the woman? Goody Proctor, your husband is marked to hang this morning. I have heard it. You know, do you not, that I have no connection with the court? I come of my own. Goody Proctor, I would save your husband's life, for if he is taken, I count myself his murderer. Do you understand me? What do you want of me? Goody Proctor, I have gone this three months like our Lord into the wilderness. I have sought a Christian way, for damnation's doubled on a minister who counsels men to lie. It is no lie. It is a lie, they are in a streak of lie. Let you not mistake your duty as I mistook my own. I came into this village like a bridegroom to his beloved, bearing gifts of high religion, the very crowns of holy law I brought, and what I touched with my bright confidence, it died, and where I turned the eye of my great faith, blood flowed up. Beware, 
Goody Proctor. Cleave to no faith when faith brings blood. It is mistaken law that leads you to sacrifice. Life, woman, life is God's most precious gift. No principle, however glorious, may justify the taking of it. I beg you, woman, prevail upon your husband to confess. Let him give his lie. Quail not before God's judgment in this, for it may well be God damns a liar less than he that throws his life away for pride. Will you plead with him? I cannot think he will listen to another. I think this may be the devil's argument. Woman, before the laws of God, we are as swine. We cannot read his will. I cannot dispute with you, sir. I lack learn and Lord Proctor, you are not summoned here for disputation. Be there no wifely tenderness within you. He will die with the sunrise. Your husband. Do you understand it? What say you? Will you contend with him? Are you stone? I tell you true, woman, had I no other proof of your unnatural life, your dry eyes now would be sufficient evidence that you delivered up your soul to hell. A very ape would weep for such calamity. Have the devil dried up every tear of pity in you? Take her out. It profit nothing she should speak to him. Let me speak with him, Excellency. Oh, he will strive will with Will you him. plead with him? Will you plead for his confession, or will you not? I promise nothing. Let me speak with him. John Proctor, Your Excellency. Pray, leave them, Excellency. Mr. Proctor, you have been notified, have you not? I see light in the sky, Mr. Let you counsel with your wife, and may God help you turn your back on hell. Come, gentlemen. Uh, if, if you would like a cup of cider, Mr. Proctor, I'm... I'm sorry. <laughs> the child there is no more oh, of the boys. Oh, they will, Rebecca Samuel keeps them. You have not seen them? Oh, I have not. You are you are a marble, Elizabeth. Oh. You have been tortured. I. They come for my life now. Oh, I know it. None have yet confessed. Oh, there be many confessed. Who are they? There be a hundred or more, they say. Goody Ballard is one. You say a good kind is one. There be many. Rebecca? No, not Rebecca. She's one foot in heaven now. Naught can hurt her more. And Giles? Oh, you've not heard it. I hear nothing where I am kept. Giles is dead. Dead? Oh, when were he hanged? Oh, he were not hanged. He would not answer I or nay to his indictment, for if he denied the charge, they'd hang him surely and auction out his property. So he stand mute and died Christian under the law. And so his sons will have his farm. It is the law, for he could not be condemned and wizard without the answer to the indictment I or nay. Then how does he die? Press him, John. Press? Great stones they lay upon his chest until he plead, I or nay. They say he give them but two words. Huh. More weight, he says, and died. More weight? I, it were a fearsome man, Giles Gore. I have been thinking that I would confess to them. Elizabeth, what say you? What say you if I give them that? I cannot judge you, John. What would you have me do? As you will, I would have it. I want you living, John, that's sure. Uh, Giles's wife, have she confessed? Oh, she will not. It is a pretense, Elizabeth. What is? I cannot mount the gibbet like a saint. It is a fraud. I am not that man. My honesty is broke, Elizabeth. 
I am no good man. Oh, John. Nothing spoiled by giving in this lie that we're not rotten long before. And yet you've not confessed till now. That speak goodness in you. Spite only keeps me silent. It is hard to give a lie to dogs. I would have your forgiveness, Elizabeth. It is not for me to give, John. I'd have you see some honesty in it. Let them that never lie die now to keep their souls. It is pretense for me. A vanity that will not blind God nor keep my children out of the wind. What say you? John, it come to naught that I should forgive you if you will not forgive yourself. It is not my soul, John. It is yours. Only be sure of this, for I know it now. Whatever you will do, it is a good man, does it? <laughs> I have read my heart this three month, John. I have sins of my own to count. It needs a cold wife to prompt lechery. Enough, enough! Oh, better you should I will me. not hear it. I know you. You take my sins upon you, John. No, I take my own. My John. own! John, I counted myself so plain, so, so poorly made. No honest love could come to me. Suspicion kissed you when I did. <sighs> I never knew how I should say my love. It were a cold house I kept. What say you, Proctor? The sun is soon up. Do what you will, John. But let none be your judge. Let me no higher judge under heaven than Proctor is. Forgive me. Forgive me, John. I never knew such goodness in the world. <laughs> my life. You confess yourself. I will have my life. God be praised. It is a providence. He will confess. Fuck, why do you cry it? It is evil. Is it not, Elizabeth? It is evil. I cannot judge you, John. I cannot. Then who will judge me? God in heaven, what is John Proctor? What is John Proctor? I think it is honest. I think so. I am no saint. Let Rebecca go like a saint. For me, it is fraud. I am not your judge. It cannot be. Do as you will. Would you? As you will. Elizabeth, would you give them such a lie? Say it. Would you ever give them this? John. You would not. If tongs of fire were singing you, you would not. It is evil. Good that it is evil, and I do it. Praise the God. You shall be blessed in heaven for this. Now then, let us have it. Are you ready, Mr. Chima? I have ink, paper, and pen. Why must it be written? Why, the good instruction of the village, mister. This we shall post upon the church door. Now then, mister. Will you speak slowly and directly to the point for Mr. Cheever's sake? Mr. Proctor, have you seen the devil in your life? Come, man, there is light in the sky. The town waits at the scaffold. I would give out this news. Did you see the devil? I did. And when he come to you, what were his demand? Did he bid you do his work upon the earth? He did. And you bound yourself to his service? Rebecca Nurse, Your Excellency. Come in, come in, woman. Ah, oh, John. You are well, then. Let you witness this man's good example that you may come to God yourself. Now hear it, goody nurse. Say on, Mr. Proctor. Did you bind yourself to the devil's service? Why, John. I did. Now, woman, you surely see it profit nothing to keep this conspiracy any further. Will you confess yourself with him? John, God send his mercy on you. I say, will you confess yourself, goody nurse? Why, it's a lie. It's a lie. How may I damn myself? I cannot, I cannot. Mr. Proctor, when the devil came to you, did you see Rebecca Nurse in his company? Come, man, take courage. Did you ever see her with the devil? No. Did you ever see her sister Mary Easty with the devil? No, I did not. Did you ever see Martha Corey with the devil? No, I did not. Did you ever see anyone with the devil? I did not. Fuck you mistake me. I am not empowered to trade your life for a lie. You have most certainly seen some person with the devil. Mr. Proctor, a score of people have already testified they saw Goody Nurse with the devil. Then it is proved. Why must I say it? Why must you say it? Why, you should rejoice to say it if your soul is truly purged of any love for hell. They think to go like saints. I'd like not to spoil their names. Mr. Proctor, do you think they go like saints? This woman never thought she'd done the devil's work. Look you, sir, I think you mistake your duty here. 
It matters nothing what she thought. She is convicted of the unnatural murder of children, and you for sending your spirit out upon Mary Warren. Your soul alone is the issue here, mister, and you will prove its whiteness or you cannot live in a Christian country. Will you tell me what persons conspired with you in the devil's company? To your knowledge was Rebecca Nurse I speak ever... my own sins. I cannot judge another. I have no tongue for it. Excellency, it is enough. He confess himself. Let him sign it. Let him sign it. It is a great service, sir. It is a weighty name. It will strike the village that Proctor confess. I beg you, let him sign it. The sun is up, Excellency. Come, then, sign your testimony. Give it to him, Mr. Cheva. Come, man, sign it. You have all witnessed it. It is enough. Oh, you will not sign You it. have all witnessed it. What more is needed? Do you sport with me? You will sign your name, or it is no confession, mister. <laughs> oh, praise be to the Lord, he has signed. <laughs> the paper, if you please, sir. No. Mr. Proctor, I must no, have... No, no, I have signed it. You have seen me. It is done. You have no need for this. Proctor, the village must have... Damn the village! I confess to God, and God has seen my name on this. It is enough. No, sir, it is not you enough. You came to save my soul, did you not? Here, I have confessed myself. Have it is enough. Confessed. I have confessed myself! Is there no good penitence but it be public? God does not need my name nailed upon the church. God sees my name, and God knows how black my sins are. Mr. Proctor, it is enough. You will not use me. I am no Sarah Good or Tichaba. I am John Proctor. You will not use me. It is no part of salvation that you should use me. I do me. not wish to use you, Mr. I Proctor. I have three children. <laughs> How may I teach them to walk like men in the world? And I sold my friends. You have not sold your feet. Begone me not. I blacken all of them when this is nailed to the church the very day they hang for silence. Mr. Proctor, I must have good and legal proof. You are the you... high court. Your word is good enough. Tell them I confess myself. Say Proctor broke his knees and wept like a woman. Say what you will, but my name cannot... It is the same, is it not, if I report it no, or you sign it? No, it is not the same. What others say and what I sign to is not the same. Why? Do you mean to deny this confession when you are free? I mean to deny nothing. Then explain to me, Mr. Proctor, why you will not because let me... Because it is my name! Because I cannot have another in my life! Because I lie and sign myself to lies! because I am not worth the dust on the feet of them that hang. How may I live without my name? I have given you my soul. Leave me my name. Is that document in your hand a lie? If it is a lie, I will not accept it. What say you? I will not deal in lies, mister. You will give me your honest confession in my hand, or I cannot keep you from the rope. Which way do you go, mister? Proctor! Oh, 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 you cannot! I can. And there is your first marvel that I can. You have made your magic now, for I do think I see some shred of goodness in John Proctor. Not enough to weave a banner with, but white enough to keep it from such dogs. Give them no tears, Elizabeth. Tears pleasure them. Show honor now. Show a stony heart and sink them with it. Let you fear nothing, Elizabeth. Another judgment waits us all. Take Goody Nurse and Proctor Marshal. Hang them high over the town. Who weeps for these, weeps for corruption. I've had no breakfast, John. <laughs> Give me your hand, Rebecca. Lean on me. <laughs> come, man. Rebecca, come. Go to him, Goody Proctor. There is yet time. Oh. Go to him. Oh. Proctor! It is pride. It is vanity. Be his helper. What profit him to bleed? 
Shall the dust praise him? Shall the worms declare his truth? Go to him. Take his shame away. He have his goodness now. God forbid I take it from him. Shortly after John Proctor was hanged, the Reverend Paris walked out of Salem and was never heard of again. Four years later, Elizabeth Proctor remarried and legend has it that Abigail Williams turned to prostitution. Twenty years after the last hanging, the government awarded compensation to the victims still living and to the families of the dead. However, some people were still unwilling to admit their total guilt. The town was still divided into factions, for some of those compensated by the government were not victims at all, but informers. The cast in this production was, in order of appearance, Reverend Paris, Michael York, Tituba, Judy Ann Elder, Abigail Williams, Madeline Smith, Susanna Walcott, Anne Hearn, Anne Putnam, Marion Mercer, Thomas Putnam, Ed Begley Jr., Mercy Lewis, Irene Aranga, Mary Warren, Carol Kane, Betty Paris, Anna Sophie Lowenberg, John Proctor, Stacy Keach, Giles Corey, Hector Elizondo, Rebecca Nurse, Georgia Brown, Reverend Hale, Richard Dreyfus, Elizabeth Proctor, Fanula Flanagan, Francis Nurse, Joe Spano, Deputy Governor Danforth, Rene Aubergenois, Judge Hathorne, Franklin Seals, Herrick, Jack Coleman. L.A. Classic Theatre Works. Susan Albert Lowenberg and Judith Aubergenois, co-producers. Los Angeles coordinator was John McNally, assisted by Sylvia Kalmans. The technical director, Steve Barker. Recording facilities provided by BBAT Productions. The recording engineer, Jeff Sykes. Editing and mixing, Tom Strother. Stage management, Richard Eisner. Spot effects, Eric Myers. Production associate, Jacqueline Delorier. The producers were Martin Jenkins and Jerry Jones, and The Crucible was directed by Martin Jenkins. The production was recorded at the Culver Studios in Culver City, California. To receive a catalog of LA Theatre Works plays, musicals, and novels on audio cassette or CD, please call 1 800 708 8863 within the U.S. or email us at latw at latw.org. That's latw at latw.org. Or visit our webpage at www.latw.org.